Hi, welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS. Welcome to another how-to video on a 12 megapixel fisheye. We've updated the hardware, much better image, much better functionality, and I'm sure when I show you what you can achieve from the new functionality, you'll be really, really impressed. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's the main one there. Uh, we thank you for all your likes, comments, and shares. So hit the subscribe button, then the notification button, and don't forget to follow DVS on LinkedIn. Uh, we need to get our follower uh, base up. And a big shout out to Liam at Prima. Uh, keep doing your thing. And if you want to know about some Dawa product, go and head over to the Almanac at the uh, Prima channel, YouTube channel. And I'm sure you'll be very well welcomed over there. Keep doing your thing, bro. All right. See you in a minute when we'll show you the functionality. Cheers, guys. And just for note, all of you that haven't seen a fish eye before is up there installed on the ceiling. Zoom in on that a bit for you so you get a better look. That's our fisheye, 6 and 12 megapixel. Or you can wall mount it in that orientation and get a 180 degree view. So that is the fitman type of what it looks like, just for those of you who are wondering. Okay, welcome back to our how-to video. You can see that's the channel I put up to. Uh, crack on, good luck Lee, and um, that's where we give him his props, and that's where it stops. So now we're logged into the fisheye. So most of you, have probably seen, heard, or understand what fisheye is. Those of you who haven't, we're gonna put live view on. You're gonna see a nice downward facing image. So you can see there, there's me. Hello, Internet Explorer is a little bit snow, so I'm about five seconds behind. But basically, it covers a large area, top down, mostly used in the retail application. So to cover till areas, high value with like beer, wines, and spirits, or high value goods, um, uh, till lines, anywhere intersecting um, pods clothing etc but it can also be used in uh, warehousing and industrial for health and safety monitoring you know we've used a lot of them in so like in warehousing where they put them up monitor the areas with lots of traffic for lifts and pallets etc people have claimed to have accidents you play it back and you can clearly see that they actually jumped in front of the forklift uh, to break their leg and they didn't fall off the forklift as they stated so actually really really good bit of kit so what you'll see on the left hand side you've got two different or three different mount options you've got ceiling mount which we're using you've got the wall mounts if you want to mount it on a wall like i showed you earlier with 180 degree view mounting out or you've got table mount most common are ceiling and wall different display mode so we're in software d warp mode so the web browser is doing the d warp so it is a little bit slower so if i choose the most common one is fish i plus 3 ptz what you'll see now is the fisheye image there and 3D warped video stream. So I can actually move and manipulate each one of those around as I need. And you can see there, it actually de-warps and makes the image presentable in a way that we can understand and gives us that detail. But we can have it in different formats. Just to show you, you could have it in that format, for instance. Not my kind of cup of tea, but um, some people like it. You've got the 180 expanded. And the old D-Warp option. So this is how hug this is the new D-Warp option that Hike Central uses. So if you choose the um bowl D warp, you can actually manipulate that image round and flatten it out. For me, that's quite nice for me. <laughs> My brain copes that nicely. So if you're like me, stupid, and you want a nice, easy thing for your brain not to have to cope with, that's the best D warp for you. And that's how Hike Central does our D warp. The 4200 software and the web browser does the D warp in this sort of 2D flat image D warp, um, but we've adopted the new D warp technology. Got this type of D warp. But. Again, that's a very different type of D-Warp. <laughs> that really messes with my head. Outside bowl D-Warp. Uh, but again, if you like that, you can have a, you can rotate it around like a ball. But there we go, different D-Warp techniques, different different people, different um, flavors, etc. So you choose your own D-Warp technique, that's fine. So we're gonna stop that now. What we've also got is the hardware tab. What most people do, we will add, or that's what we advise most people to do, is add in the fisheye view only to the NVR. That does one of two things. One, it only uses one channel on the NVR up. And secondly, when you de-warp this image on playback, as mostly what you have to remember is it'll be used for retrospective review. So 
after the fact. When you de-warp it later on using the software, VS Player 4200, etc., you're going to be de-warping a 12 megapixel image. If you de-warp this now and put it into the NVR, you get a 6 megapixel fisheye plus 10, 3, 1080p-ish um, uh, de-warped PTZ stream. So you're already lowering that de-warp. So if you then find something that wasn't in one of the 1080p de-warped images and you have to de-warp this fisheye image, you then de-warp in a 6 megapixel image so the detail is much less again. So we always suggest keep it at its native 12 megapixel resolution and then do the de-warp after and there's only one channel. But if you do for some reason have to uh, separate that out, for instance, you wanted to look at a fixed position permanently, then you can do that, just bear the... Uh, the little uh, gotchas in mind but under the hardware setting this is where you set the mount type and then you can actually set the mount mode required once you select it the camera reboots and then you've got four streams that you can add to the nvr okay so quite nice and simple under configuration we've added some new options i won't go through every single option of a standard ip camera you already know them you're quite familiar with them i've covered them, covered them in lots of videos what we will say is in the storage, I've got an SD card and storage management. I've already got an SD card fitted and initialized, all done. The new firmware comes with memory card detection, so it tells you the remaining lifespan. And we've got an issue with this SD card, but it works, so I'm going to leave it. You can also do the record lock, so I can actually turn that on and then put a password in there. So if somebody steals the uh, SD card, they need the password to get into it. It locks it. Um, and you've got arm and schedule and linkage stuff. Um, so that's enough of that. New options under heat map configuration. So the existing uh, fish eyes already had the heat map information. A lot of you used it and found it very useful and I've seen some fantastic uses for that and I'm sure you've got many more to come. But what we've done, we've further uh, enhanced it by giving you the maximum and minimum object size. So it basically allows you to filter out objects in that heat map data that may have triggered it, that you didn't want to trigger it. So say, um, a family with a pram or a trolley and that's a big object and you don't want that counted as part of your data for some reason then you draw the minimum and maximum object size to filter that out similarly if you want a very small children for instance and you don't want them counted as part of the heat map data you can draw a smaller box um, to eliminate a box is slightly bigger than a small person and that will filter that side out you know there's different different applications that you guys probably can think of but there is a minimum maximum object size filtration on there and then you've got uploading data type this is one of the new parts you've got dwell time and people number or just dwell time so dwell time and people number gives you two factors dwell time is on average how long are the people staying in an area so when we go into the application side you'll see that now so it gives you an indication as to how long or the areas people are spending the most time in so if this is a pod with a sale on it and most of the area shows this is the highest dwell time then obviously they're drawn to the sale items similarly if that pod had high value ticket items on there like uh, branded rolex watches uh, if you want to send me one free that's fine i'm happy to promote that um you can uh, and most of the traffic and dwell time is situated on that you know the high value ticket items are selling well and the people numbers to give you an indication of how many people are moving to these areas it's not as accurate as people counting and we won't offer it as a people counting solution but it forms part of the data set so you draw your areas I'm in schedule default 24 7 and you can set notify surveillance center up if you want there's no need to do that another new tab intersection analysis I said it right that time click on it and when it loads, it gives us an option to draw this box here. So we can draw the area anywhere we like in this um, field of view. And then it gives us an A, B, C, D uh, rule. What this intersection analysis does, it shows you the people moving between an area. And I'll show you that within the application uh, shortly. But you basically draw an area, you set your A, B, C, Ds up. Um, and you can move them around as, um, as, as you need them. So it could be that they go that way or whatever, but we'll leave them as they are. Our um, mid-schedule, 24-7, so it's always active and it's enabled. So there are the two new main features. This is the model number, so it's the updated G0 12 megapixel. It is available also in 6 megapixel, and there is a brand new version with an ImmerVision lens coming out. Hooray, I hear you say. When that one comes out, I'll do a separate video on that. The D-Warp on that should be absolutely fantastic. Those great guys at ImmerVision really do make a fantastic product, and we're making benefit of that. So, 
application straight into there. Type of report types now. So daily report, weekly, monthly, annual. That hasn't changed. That's always been the same. I've reset this device today so I can show you just the data from today. So we're going to select daily. We're going to select by dwell time where you've got by people number today and do counting. What you can see there is me. That's a static image of myself. And most of the uh, is me sat here doing this video and preparing for the video. So you can see there the different colors represents from seconds up to minutes. This red square around here is where I've been sat. It's saying I've been sat there for 26 minutes. So it's, like I said, it's all the prep time. As a lot of people start moving through this field of view, you will have different colors through as and when they're moving through and standing there. But from this image, we're taking that me, the only person in there I know, um, but that's your highest volume of traffic and the long, the, well, not just traffic, that's the longest area of dwell time. And that's right, because I'm at the PC currently. I hope that makes sense. If you need further clarification, please ask. So the next option we've got there, um, by the way, these time heat map functions on the side there, when you generate that, it's just a graph. You can export and use that within your own uh, reporting tool if you want, it's just a CSV file. Most people are interested in the graphical side of it, which is that image there. So if we go by people number and collect counting, again, same image, but what you'll see here is over the period of today, I came in through this door here and I paced up and down this, like obviously one preparing for the video, but another one is to get some data in here. So we had some sort of path map. This is ideal for path mapping. So customers come through your front door, they go to this pod here, which is your high value ticket items. They have a walk through the rest of the store here, but they're spending a long time in this area, but the most of the footfall is actually going over here. So the amount of people, so you've got time so that's time spent longest time spent is over here so this could be a registration portal for instance and the most amount of footfall is over in this area which is your high value ticket items like rolexes or whatever they, that may be um, or whatever function you need within that that allows you to provide that to the customer which they can start doing a to b testing is called um, so it's another value add. It doesn't cost you anything. You just need an SD card in the camera. It can be used standalone. Uh, you just dial into the camera to pull that data out and then provide it to the customer or you give the customer access. It doesn't have to form part of a larger system. If you do want it part of a larger system, we support this functionality within the IMS 4200 software or within Hike Central. You can add multiple of these together and create like a report and do it automated, etc., and get much more data out of it from a central location. So many options available to you. I hope, that you, I hope that makes sense and you can find some uses for that. And the next option up there is the intersection analysis report. And again, the high central supports all of this. So the intersection analysis report, we've got flow in A, B, C, D. So these are the areas. Uh, remember the arrows I drew earlier. So we'll select the first one, A, daily report, counting. And what you'll see here is um, the, the arrows indicating the lines that we had on that map. And then this gives you the data for the day. So we're saying from A in, A out is zero. So from, from that direction, A in and then A back out, nobody has done that. Um, I'm not Casper the Ghost, I can't walk through walls. So I would definitely say there would be no people going into A that way and back out of A that way in this particular format. Then you've got three in to A. So you've got three into A and then back out to B. So from this area here, so they went from A across to B. So that's me walking up and down, that's right. And then zero in there, and then from A into D out. So I went from there and then out that way. So 75% of the traffic went up there, 25% of it went there. Again, you've got to take that as that's just me, but it gives you an idea of what we're starting to get data from. Then you choose another area, B, and it'll give you a different set of statistics. So you can see there that it's overlaid there in it, but it's actually given to you in figures there to tell you from what area to what area those people are transit transitioning from. So it allows you to work out from the path map and this data, you should get a much better feel of how people interact and flow through your store, which is invaluable and money can't buy this kind of data. Well, it can now, uh, traditionally it couldn't. So we can provide this data there and your customer can make whatever use of that that they want. And again, we've got another two areas and again, another two areas. 
So within Hike Central, if you really want this as an automated report uh, front end, you are probably better off pushing themselves towards Hike Central. If you want this as a standalone product or that you're happy to interact either as a service for the customer or the customer interacts directly with it, you get all this data directly from the device. Hopefully you found this very useful and you can find many uses for this. Uh, all I want to say is thanks again for watching these videos and the love and the likes and the shares and the comments. Um, it, it really is appreciated and we'll see you very soon for the next how-to video. Take care and thanks a lot.